What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So we've been talking about the medication lithium in the last video and I'm going to continue that theme in this video because there's more to discuss in terms of the mechanism of lithium, a little bit of the side effects as well as the clinical effects and the reasons why lithium might be a good medication for bipolar disorder. So what you'll notice in most cases is that the precise molecular mechanism of most of these psychiatric medications is unknown. So if you actually look up, even though we theoretically think, let's say uh, SRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, we think that that is a reuptake inhibitor of serotonin. If you actually look up the actual drug company's information, you'll see that it says the precise mechanism is unknown. So that's no different here for lithium than it is for those other medications. However, we do have some ideas from the science that can tell us a little bit about what the medication might be doing and give us a theory as to why it works and what the benefits might be. So the primary mechanism of action involves second messenger systems and neurotransmitters. One thing to remember about any medication that's being called a quote mood stabilizer, it's going to affect second messenger systems. So we'll, we'll talk about what some of those second messengers are in the case of lithium, but that's an important point. So I, I like to think of these medications as second messenger modifiers. So they're modifying the downstream effects of these second messenger systems. Lithium specifically inhibits something called glycogen synthase kinase 3, GSK for short. So kind of a difficult thing to, to think about but what that does is that has important downstream targets for monoamine neurotransmission. So the reason why we think lithium working or inhibiting glycogen synthase kinase 3 is important is because it's going to have effects again on those monoamine neurotransmitters downstream. And this also is known to regulate apoptosis. So you might be asking what is apoptosis? So apoptosis is basically programmed cell death. So this is the death of, say, a neuron cell, but the body initiates it in such a way that it doesn't necessarily cause an inflammatory response. But of course, we don't want death of our, neur our, of our neuronal cells, right? That that's a bad thing. So what we're thinking here is that this increased GSK activity could be causing some of that apoptosis or initiating that process of apoptosis and then leading to neuronal cell death. So that's where lithium gets this idea of a neuroprotective medication. So you, I've said in the previous video that there's some idea that this may be neuroprotective, it may be good in neurodegenerative diseases, things like Alzheimer's disease or other neurocognitive disorders. Another piece of information that we know of is that increased GSK activity is associated with mania in mice. So when we look at the animal models for mania, we can see that increased GSK activity is associated with mania in this, in this animal population and in, the, uh, in these animal studies. So lithium, like I said, is going to do two things in this case. It's going to reduce the risk of mania. It's also going to reduce neuronal cell death caused specifically by that excess excitatory neurotransmission that occurs during manic episodes. During mania, your neuronal cells are firing at a much higher rate than they otherwise would be. So this is going to prevent some of that. The second piece that I'll talk about here in the second messenger system is another second messenger called anestetol monophosphate. So this is IMP for short, and what lithium does is it also lowers brain IMP and decreases the ability of neurons to generate second messengers. So, it's, so this is most of the second messenger systems it's inhibiting, uh, as you can see from what we're talking about. And again, the net effect of that is a decrease in neuronal hyperactivity, which is what we think is causing that excitatory toxicity that's leading to the neuronal cell death. So again, it's neuroprotective, but it's also decreasing firing and possibly, again, reducing the symptoms of mania. Finally, lithium can modulate something called synapsin-2, SYMP2 for short, and this is a neuronal phosphoprotein and possible candidate gene for the etiology of bipolar disorder. So this is one that they're looking at as a potential, uh, as a potential candidate gene, meaning this is, this is the gene 
or the, the primary gene responsible for bipolar disorder. So synapsin 2 is another target. Now, neurotransmission affected by lithium includes other things as well, things I haven't mentioned yet, like glutamate transmission, dopamine transmission, GABA. So after one to two weeks of lithium use, what you start to see is a down regulation of NMDA receptors. Now, NMDA receptors are very popular these days. If you're familiar with the mechanism of ketamine, it's an antagonist at these NMDA receptors. So, it's good. so after two weeks, we're going to see down regulation again, the inhibitory process on the NMDA receptors, and the uptake of glutamate is restored to a normal functional level. So that's the idea behind it. Again, this is all based off of essentially what could be summarized as an excitatory mechanism of action. We think that mania is excessive neuronal activity, hyperactivity, and what lithium is doing is dampening down that process. So it's a little technical, but it definitely overall you could think about it and conceptualize it in a much easier way. So Lithium also has some other effects. It is thought to increase GABA. So we know GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter, and we know that that's responsible again for taking everything down or dampening everything down. So again, de an overall decrease in neuronal excitation. The final piece I'll talk about in, in this video before moving to the next one will be lithium has some serotonergic and antioxidant effects as well and it's been shown to increase BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So this is a, a, a also possible reason for its benefits when it comes to depression or low mood. And it could also possibly explain, again, more of those neuroprotective effects of lithium. So with all that technicality and all of those things, I'll summarize it by saying that majority of that lithium is affecting second messenger systems. Those second messenger systems are reducing excitotoxicity and over overstimulation of the neurons leading to an overall reduction in both manic symptoms as well as the neuroprotective factors and the inhibition of things like apoptosis or programmed cell death which is one of the things we we think helps with lithium in terms of its neuroprotective factors uh, it does have some other minor places where it's acting, like we said at the NMDA receptors, it's acting as a blocker there, it's restoring that normal glutamate transmission, it's increasing GABA, which is again the major inhibitory neurotransmitter, taking things down, and it's also possibly increasing BDNF, responsible for not only neuroprotective factors, but also those antidepressant, uh, antidepressant effects we see with lithium. So. That's the mechanism of action. I wanted to keep this short and simple, so hopefully this makes sense. If you have questions or comments, please drop them below, and please like and subscribe to the channel so that we can keep making content.